George Allo is here with us. Uh, he's a sports editor for Sun newspaper. Thank you for coming on this morning. It's my pleasure, Chamberlain. Uh, uh, and, you know, having seen that, yes, lots of people are happy, even though we have Algeria in hand. But, guys, let, let's look at um, uh, the back page of Vanguard Sports. You know, we, we, we looked at it this morning and we thought, that, wait a minute, these guys, once upon a time, they were struggling to qualify. And then after qualifying, now you see that I want to face Super Eagles at World Cup. Messi. Uh, and, and I remember I just tweeted that now I'm seeing some funny and interesting responses. It's likely that we may meet Argentina, isn't it? It's likely because uh, Argentina will be one of the seeded teams and Nigeria will not be seeded. So wow. uh, it's, it's a possibility. We've played them uh, again and again at the World Cup. They're not a threat, are they? And uh, they've always been <laughs> <They're> very strict. <laughs> they are not a threat, are they, to us? No, they are. Massive yeah. one, I must tell you. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> they are. But you are condemned to play the very best at the World Cup. Yeah. If it is Argentina, if it is uh, Spain. Spain, if it is Germany, Germany, you need to play any of them. And football is changing. All that we need to do is prepare well. Look at the Netherlands, for instance. They didn't mm. qualify for the World Cup. Yeah. Argentina and Messi that is talking, they were almost on the verge of not qualifying mm -hmm. until he conjured up that magic in Quito, where they defeated Ecuador by three goals to nothing, with him scoring the three goals. So at that point, they were not almost going to make it. But if you look at it, the champions of uh, Comobo, that is uh, Chile, didn't qualify. Yeah. They lost their last game to Brazil. The African champions, Cameroon, did not qualify. So the game is changing. All that we need to do, like Cardo one was there was something very instructive that Kano said today in the Sun newspapers too, that we need to prepare well. Mm. That the challenge for us is not, not, not having the talent, but good preparation. I like we the way you say that uh, uh, things are changing now. That's, so that uh, will suggest that what happened in the past may not necessarily happen now. Happen I mean, again, yes. Because we're, looking at, uh, we're not looking at club football. So uh, uh, Messi himself may be uh, misjudgmental in his, I want to... Meet. Play Nigeria. Play again. Nigeria. Well, and as the, as his his mindset would be that. Country, his, I mean, there are 10 other players yes. that are not necessarily exactly. messy. Exactly. But with the performance that we had when we went out to the finals with Stan, the Zambian uh, team, yes. and we came through, made the qualification, mm -hmm. and we're heading to Russia, do you think that our performance at that level would warrant us meeting with Spain, Germany, or Argentina and scaling through? Yes. Let me tell you. There are no two games that are the same. And the qualifiers in Africa is a different setting from when you get to the World Cup. If you look at the kind of environment we have here, it's not going to be the kind of environment that you have in Russia. The setting will be different. Our players don't even play the best of football when they are home here. That is the truth. Because you well, look, 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 look at the facilities that we have. The best that we have is Uyo. Look at the FA Cup final that me and you saw at the Agigi Stadium on Sunday. Those boys couldn't play their football. So, but when they go out there in Africa, we saw a boring final between Aqua United and Niger Tornado. Because very hard tough we have in uh, Agigi. Agigi. That rubber, you can't play football there. It's like being caged, five aside. So the facilities are a challenge. But by the time you go out there, the kind of players that we have are players that can equally face the messes of this world. But do, do, do Just yesterday, we saw Hanacho yeah. playing for Leicester. Mm. I mean... Brilliant football. Brilliant football. You saw Alex Iwobi, the same kind of goal that Alex scored against Zambia was the kind of goal he scored just before he came home in the Premiership. So, we have the players. By the time we get to Russia, it's going to be a different setting. But we need to get it right. And Genetra is already warning yeah. that the kind of thing that stops African teams from doing well, which he wouldn't want to see in Russia. He has, he has made that clear to the NFF. They, they started meeting, planning for the World Cup. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we shouldn't go to the World Cup and then by the time we are playing Argentina, for instance, the, the, on the eve of the game, you are talking about protesting. bonuses. Because, I mean, we're getting $12.5 12. 12. Yes. million. Dollars. That's colossal. That's colossal. That, uh, I think that's, uh, they said it was $4.5 yeah. billion. billion uh, yes. That wow. which you get to prepare for the World Cup. And I mean, we have no excuse whatsoever. And if that fund comes in and we use it for our preparation, exactly. we should be in the finals. FIFA has made everything easy for every country. 
They are giving you money to prepare for the World Cup. So why do you not come to the World Cup to embarrass yourself? African countries, but you ask yourself, do you see European countries arguing over money? The answer is no. The problem will always come from Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, and all that, where we don't get things right. Look at the minister. The minister is talking of pleading with the National Assembly to provide funds for the World Cup, as if he forgot that Nigeria was going to walk to the World Cup. And he said it's not budgeted for. I mean, that shows you the kind of country that we run. We should have known by now, the minister should have known that Nigeria would go to the World Cup in 2018. So the minister not talking about the thing not being in the budget is a shame. Okay. But you know, if, if these are things that should be put in place, why must we go to the president always? Yeah. He, he's always talking of, uh, yes, I'm running to the president for intervention. I mean, he should run a ministry that knows that Nigeria was going to play the World Cup in Indola, that we are going to play another uh, match in, against Algeria and all that. These are not things that you run to the minister for, uh, to the president for intervention. Not but, but, uh, you, you can't totally fault the minister because uh, you'd expect that uh, private concerns will come in to support sporting activities, uh, football, athletics, and uh, cricket, and, 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 and then, what have and you, then you, and you, even you, boxing. Then but you need to give these, the these are not even coming coming you forward. Need, you need to give the federation a breathing space then if see if as a government you breathe down on your fa then you do not expect the corporate bodies to put in their money there mm. but if you give them the minister for instance in britain do not know what does not interfere with the running of the fa so if we want to get to that level where you want the federation to be autonomous you must not interfere with every to the day to day running of uh, the football federation. So these are the challenges. Even for you, accountability purposes? Well, the corporate bodies that give you money, will, like ITO for instance, they brought in money now to pay the FA, and yeah. they brought a, a bit of money to be part of this, uh, the whole thing. So you cannot steal money. You understand me? A bit of money was part of the arrangement from day one. ITO brought him in. So that nobody, the money will not develop when you go to boss me, that, that, like they will say. So that is the way we should go. I mean, if you want corporate bodies to be part of the federation, if you want corporate bodies to be part of this business of football, business, football is big business for Christ's sake, everywhere in the world. Look at the kind of money that is coming in through, through TV rights. So we need to get it right. Going into the World Cup now, as it were, this is not something, if you go into the World Cup with a fire brigade approach, we will still lose out. But if we begin to get our acts together, we are qualified now. The World Cup is not tomorrow. The World Cup is in summer next year. We should put strategies in place. How do we come ahead of the games uh, running up to the World Cup? We, FIFA has given us windows for friendlies. We need to play as many friendlies but, as possible. But that's up to NFF. To organize yes, all exactly. of those, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. The NFF, good team, they already put in plan in place. They want to play in every FIFA window. And not just playing in every FIFA window, play quality friendlies. Because this yeah. is another thing. Mm. If you play quality friendlies, then you, you begin to plan well ahead of the World and, Cup. And, and, and that will be playing teams that have qualified for the World Cup. Most likely, Most or likely yes. maybe it's, the Netherlands. In that category as well, won't be bad. Exactly. So we need to play quality friendlies. Then we need to ensure that we do not go to the World Cup talking about money in the midst of competition. Mm -hmm. But who yeah, that, that, that's really, really yeah. key because uh, I can imagine the kind of distraction. The distraction that comes with for, it. I was, I was in Brazil and I know that before we played France, ordinarily, if we had played France, prepared for that game without all the distractions that went into it on the eve of the game, we may not have crashed out in that uh, match against yes, Brazil. Brazilia. What, but the it, previous which night... One? Which one? Which one? France or Denmark? France. France. At uh, Brazil 2014. Uh, okay. But the previous night, the players spent the whole night sharing money. Wow. Mm. And you had a, a crucial second round game against uh, France. And at the end of the day, Keshe and his boys came out looking like a team, you will see it from the very first kick, especially when Ogei Onazi got injured, <laughs> and then the Pugas of this world uh, and Matudi ran rings <laughs> and we lost out in, okay. uh, Bra in let's, Brazil. Let's, let's mm -hmm. talk about uh, uh, the, the technical team. Let's begin with Raw himself. He seems to have, um, people say that 
on a scale of 1 to 10, we're satisfied that he has taken us to there about 6, some say 7. Yes. And uh, there's a backlog, there's, there's more to achieve, say between 3 and 4. Exactly. Do you think that uh, Roe has performed in such a manner that he has more to give? I, I think so. He has shown from the one that he was here for business. He was here to do his job. See, some of the foreign managers that we had before now, We'll even be talking about money, how he gets his pay and all that. But before Atio came and gave our football a lifeline, kudos to them, the man did not even talk about his pay. He was old for months, but he had a focus that the challenge is to take us to the World Cup. And he wants to use this country to make name for himself. Let me tell you, Rua has worked in uh, countries that are not as endowed as Nigeria. But he knows that given the kind of talents that Nigeria has that he can use it as a street ball to sell himself. So he is concentrating on the job that he has come here to do. But good thing now, he has no financial problems any longer. Do you think passion is driving him? Yes. I passion think so. drives him. Yes, passion is driving him. And he believes, see, any average coach can take Nigeria far. <laughs> any average coach. So you don't you need to be average? a Morigo. Why? Because of the talent. Because the yeah, talent. Because we have the talent. Let me yeah. tell you, some of the players that we even have are because they are Africans, they are because they are Nigerians. Let me tell you, someone like J.J. Okocha should not have ended playing for a, 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 a team like Bolton if he was to be white. J.J. had the talent to play for the best, and if he had a good manager, to play for any of the best teams in the world. Why, why didn't he? That's what I'm telling you, the, oh, the place okay. he's coming from. So we have the talent. So there's a limitation from where you come from? Of course. I, I thought but there, there was no, like, from. That's, that's like talking well, about racism. I, I thought that I, racism sure is, is downplayed in, in, in it's football. Beyond being mindset, see, when you come from this part of the world, you already face challenges because your football is not good at all. And that is mm. why some of our best players even end up playing in places like Sudan. Well, with, well, this we, 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 with this yeah. analogy, with this analogy, how do we go into the World Cup? Even <laughs> a country like Sudan, for instance, pay as much as five thousand dollars to a player every month. But our best clubs here don't even pay one thousand dollars. Yeah, that, that's. I don't uh, know of any club in Nigeria that pays their players up to a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars here. 